Hi everyone, welcome to another Rubber Dance Design Team tutorial. This one is inspired by this month's colour challenge. It's the month of April and we're going to be using greys, pinks and blues, sort of delicate uh, versions of those colours, powder pink, powder blue and uh, pale grey. So I'm going to be using that on my art journal page today. The stamps I'm using are the Lace Background and the Large Butterfly from the Antiques Botanical set. Um, I think the Lace background is from ATC backgrounds too if I remember rightly so I'm going to leave you links to the challenge and to the rubber dance blog at the end of this tutorial should you want to take part I hope you decide to play along and as I said in case you're watching this later on this is the month of April 2015 so this is my new journal it's an old book as you can see I bought it at a sort of charity shop um, antique shop and I always like to pick pages that are quite thick these are quite thick pages and they also as you can see here are sort of nested within groups and that makes it easy for me to remove certain pages out of the book should my journal start to get a bit bulky and they've, they're stitched each of those groups of pages are stitched together so I did learn from this journal this one's got slightly thinner pages than I had in my last journal so I'm definitely sticking a couple of pages together as I work through my journal and it also um, had a tendency to release the ink from the print on the page I don't know whether this in its day was a fairly cheap run of books uh, but the ink definitely moved about a bit as I put products on it so I'll definitely be likely to be sealing the pages or using gesso on them. Now the other thing with the challenge uh, this month and every month there's always a little bit of a theme you don't have to use that theme in your entry um, but this month it's texture and uh, I'm going to be creating texture in different ways on my art journal page. So as I said this book is going to be all about trying out new products and perhaps uh, new ideas and just really creating little bits of art. Uh, I might per uh, perhaps use a quote on the page and uh, at the moment I'm tearing um, the centre pages so I've found the middle of this little group of pages and I'm going to create a couple of layers uh, by tearing into the page and first of all I'm going to remove this top section. So the first way that I'm creating texture on this page is to layer up um, several sections of page. So I've removed that top section and now I want to create the narrowest strip of paper that's going to form. You'll see it as I, it's a little bit difficult to describe in words, but you'll see as I uh, work on this little stack exactly what I'm doing. So I'm just tearing probably a centimetre, half an inch strip or leaving that behind. Now I've been careful to make sure that it is caught between two little stitches in my book. You can see in the centre of the book there I've got four stitches holding each group of pages together. So now I'm going to come a little bit wider on the second layer. So this is the second little group of pages and you can see it's a slightly narrower strip. I'm careful to uh, ease it gently from the stitches so I don't break those stitches. I've got no idea how strong the stitches might be. So I'm going to just, because this is a narrow strip and you can see it's already pulled away from that top stitch, I'm just going to add a little bit of glue in the centre to keep that in position while I work. So I've come roughly a quarter of an inch wider than my initial strip. Now removing the bottom section of the second set of pages and then I'm going to create one more layer in my stack you can see now wh where or what the idea is and again coming out roughly another quarter of an inch and removing the third set of pages and that leaves me with pages or the four and five which will be the outside um, or the bottom page that forms the actual journal page that I'll be painting on. So I've cre created three little strips on each side of my layout. Don't forget you can keep hold of all these little sections. You'll see I use a little bit of, my, of uh, this myself on my page as I get going. And uh, I've created this little stack of papers. So you can see I've already created some texture on my page. So now I'm going to join two pages together. Like I said, it's a little bit 
uh, more flimsy than the book that you've seen me working on, uh, which is a little bit more of a cross between a scrapbook and an art journal. And it's always worth having a look through your books, see if you've got any notes in there. And I think that says Fred on there. Fred, thanks. I don't know if anyone will <laughs> ever think well, that was my book. It's quite old. Um, and I think it was printed in the 1960s, so when I was just teeny, teeny, tiny. Um, and I'm going to be, hopefully, turning it into um, a page where I can experiment with some ideas that I might have to create a journal page. So I'm going to use my uh, 3D gel medium, which is a, a Finabar pro product from Prima, and I'm going to be sticking two pages at each side of my layout together just to give me an extra bit of um, strength because I'm going to be putting sort of paints and other mediums onto my page and I want to make sure that it doesn't sink straight through to the page underneath and uh, that it doesn't just go completely wrinkly because it can't stand uh, and hold all, the, all of that product. So I'm just taking a little bit of time making sure I really do a good job of sticking these two pages together so that they become one. And it's always worth just having a look at your edges to make sure they're the places where you tend to miss with your brush and make sure that those two pages are nice and secure. And you can see that I'm using a piece of card to protect the pages underneath. Don't always remember to put that in place but it's always worth uh, having something like this when you're working on a journal. Again, because if you did make a mistake and you get a lot of seepage on a layout, you're not going to go through your entire book if you're protecting it with a sheet of card or perhaps even a sheet of acetate if you want to. So now I'm going to seal this little map um, together and you can see this was a blank page so there's no actual text on this page that I'll be working on. I'm not going to stick those little extra leaves down yet and you'll see that I'm uh, going to be working on them separately so I'm not going to glue them into position just yet and I'm also creating another little stack of pages and I'm just thinking that actually I want the text to run the same way so you'll see in a moment I make that decision and uh, pick up a different page I'm just working out the width trying to work out how wide I want just a little extra stack of papers in this bottom right hand corner again I was just toying should I stick it down should I not stick it down and you'll see that I'm opting to stick it down and then I change my mind luckily I'm, I've only put a tiny bit of glue because I was I was a little bit um, hesitant wasn't sure and uh, you can see that I'm going to undo this in just a moment there we go <laughs> but I'm going to create a little stack of three and uh, so that they mirror and add a little bit of interest in the bottom right hand corner and mirror that central strip. So I just want three, they're exactly the same length and graduating widths. Exactly mimicking that little section I created at the beginning. So again, that's where I really decide, no, I'm not going to stick that down yet either. And uh, I'm going to get to work on the actual main pages of the journal. So I'm going to seal my page or um, create a base for my page using this gesso. It's, um, this one is by Claudine Helmuth and it's a Ranger product. And I'm just slightly watering the gesso down and just creating a base. So I'm just covering my page. That has the effect of lightening the text. It also has the effect if I put any light colours on top of it, it would give me a whiter starting point so it wouldn't alter the colour of any product quite as much. So save you watching me gessoing everything, I just added a layer of gesso to each side of these paper strips and two layers of gesso to the main pages and obviously drying in between coats. And the gesso also acts as a barrier so that hopefully none of the product that I'm using on this page will seep through to the pages underneath. I just have to stick that bit back on. <laughs> I 
I only got these pick pens at Christmas from my lovely mum and uh, I've wanted them for a little while so they, it's still quite new I'm still experimenting with them and seeing where they work and where they don't you can see the colors are quite vibrant considering I told you the color scheme is powder pink powder blue and smoky grey but I'm going to use the technique where I smudge them out so you can see here I'm just trying them on some normal card and they're not shifting they're not moving the card is just soaking up that ink and they're not moving very much so I'm hoping the gesso creates a surface where I can smudge this pen out if it didn't then I would coat the page with a layer of matte multimedium and then they would smudge out but I think they're going to work on this gesso so I'm going to go straight for it but I've noticed that the blue is a little bit too dark so I will change the blue for a lighter blue from my collection now the beauty of the pit pens is that you can collect them as single pens you don't have to buy a box or uh, be treated to a box as I was you can you know just give them a go by buying a couple of pens that perhaps you might use for shading um, or um, outlining you know certain elements in your book and you can see here I have made sure my archival ink is dry and then I'm adding the grey over the top and smudging it out and the little uh, stamped image is not shifting so I'm happy with that and I'm going to go ahead and uh, cover my page with more texture so I'm going to use my lace stamp this is a background stamp from rubber dance and I'm going to stamp it over my entire page so just switching that blue for a lighter blue it's a little bit more of a turquoise but I think we can still call it powder blue you can see part of that little bit at the bottom that won't show in a minute when I've uh, stamped the texture all over the page I am I've hidden my little test section underneath my strips of paper so using watering can archival ink I'm going to stamp that lace stamp all over the two main pages So once I've got all that lovely lacy texture across my page, I'm going to come in with my pick pen to just give everything a lovely coat of grey. So making sure that archival ink is dry first. And then I'm using a cool grey pit brush pen, big brush pen. <laughs> and I am literally just scribbling a little bit of colour on the page at a time and smudging it into that background just to create that lovely smoky grey colour. Now you might think that this is going to really mess my hands up but I don't know why the um, although this will be permanent once it's dry on my page it really doesn't linger too long on your fingers. I'm stamping the same texture on each of those little paper strips. When you're stamping on the front page like this, because of the spine of the book, you need to put your hand underneath so that you can create some pressure and resist uh, to be able to use any kind of stamp on that first part of your journal while it's still uh, new. As your book gets thicker, you'll get a little bit more um, depth of pages, so it'll be much easier and your book will lie flatter. and also on those little strips adding that lacy texture. This is where my pink and blue colour is going to come in and I'm just using again the pink pen this time exactly the same technique, a little bit of scribble and then blending that colour out with my finger. Now you might think here that this isn't very powder pink and uh, in a minute powder blue and I'm go I've got a little plan for that. You can see there I've just caught my hand with my pen and it serves quite well to show you uh, how easy this pen cleans up. So I'm also adding it to the widest piece of paper in my little paper stack that's going to be a bit lower down on my page. And then I'm coming back in with my blue marker but before I do that because my finger is pink if I went in now and smudged out the blue I'd end up with a little sort of shade of purple so I'm just using a baby wipe and you can see how quickly that came off my hand probably takes a little bit longer on the finger that you've really been rubbing into the ink but it does come off quite easily I've cleaned off the residue and now I'm ready to go ahead and 
carry on blending with the blue marker. So blending out the blue on the centre section of my little paper stack. And of course repeating that on the opposite side. And then last but not least, I'm just going to add a little bit of grey to the thinnest strip. You can see how throughout I've used this bit of scrap paper to make sure that uh, I don't contaminate the rest of my work. And now I just want to create a bit of a frame around my page and I'm doing that by taking the grey pen around the edge of the page and then just blending that out slightly creating a darker shadow around the edge of the page. You can see it's quite subtle um, so I do want to or I do decide to darken this up slightly by repeating, repeating the technique with um, a black marker pen. And then I'm taking the black pen and I'm going around again around the edge. I'm being a little bit more careful this time to not to add too much to darken things up too much. And then just adding a fine strip of the black around the outside edge of the layout. Now if you do find that you add too much it's quite easy either to keep rubbing until you fade that out or to just while it's wet, go over it with a baby wipe and you remove the ink and you can start again. So then I'll just make sure that everything is nice and dry and that the ink is not going to shift as I add the next layer. So I've got great texture going on on my page now by using that lace stamp. I've started to introduce some colour onto my page and now I just want to knock everything back. Everything that I've done I'm going to give a coat of gesso. This time I'm going to water it down so to create a wash and I'm just going to layer it over my page and in the first instance just trying to decide how light to go um, bearing in mind that I want to create some details on top of this texture. Uh, I want to stamp my butterflies into the background as well but I want them to stand out a little bit more vibrant than the background so I need to go back uh, to fairly light in order to keep my butterflies to the same colour scheme otherwise my butterflies are going to be have to, have to be quite vibrant to stand out and uh, I want to stick to those pale colours. So just giving everything two coats of gesso wash to get to the depth of colour that I'm happy with. And not forgetting that little set of papers And now I'm going back in and just re-emphasizing that shading on top of that gesso. Now this is where you need to make sure that your gesso is 100% dry otherwise you will spoil your pens. So I'm just coming back in with the grey and blending that out and it stands, the grey now stands out quite a lot more because obviously the background is that much lighter so I don't need to use the black. And I'm also creating a bit of a shadow along the edge of those paper strips. So. I'm literally just drawing along the, what would be the edge of the paper strip and then blending that out so that I form a shadow top and bottom of my paper strip. You can see how that makes that lifts those little paper strips up from the background page and I'm going to do the same thing with this little stack of papers. So just making sure this is where I want it to go and then again repeating that process around the edge of the stack just to create a little shadow effect again that pops that forward. And now I'm going to use my little butterfly stamp from the Antique Botanicals stamps. 
Now what I'm going to do next is a little bit drastic. Uh, the actual butterfly has a little set of uh, words. It's like an, um, an antique illustration and it's the name of the butterfly in very tiny type. But because I want to use this butterfly in the background, it's going to look a little bit odd. So I'm carefully removing it. I'm putting it back in with the other stamps because I can always, always add it if I want that element on this stamp in the future. So now I've got a plain butterfly and I want to create a couple of masks. So I'm stamping onto a post-it note and making sure part of the butterfly is up against that sticky area of the post-it note. And I'm cutting out a couple of uh, little butterflies at once. So I've got a little stack of post-it notes and then I'm using them to mask um, so that I can stamp one or two butterflies together and make one look like it's slightly behind the other completely miss as I've just done there. <laughs> Again making sure that I hold uh, or support the back of the book in this area to get my stamped image in position. I just want a few butterflies flying across my background page. So I hope you can see how easy it is just to use a few stamps and a few products to create pretty pages just by layering up all your different elements. So you can see here I'm going over my butterfly with a little bit of that uh, gesso wash. Why am I doing that I hear you say. <laughs> it's because I just want to lighten them slightly so that I can add a little bit of the pink and blue um, over the butterflies just to colour them slightly. I don't want them to be too vibrant but I do want them to stand out from that grey background and I thought that by adding the little wash of white it would just make sure that the colour did stand out and didn't sort of grey uh, against the background that I'm adding the colour to. If that makes sense. <laughs> So I'm not being too precise, I'm just lightly going over those butterflies just so that they lighten slightly and that the colour that I add on top will stand out. So now for the colour, I'm just going to add a little bit of pink into the centre of each of my butterflies. I'm just seeing that it's going to work on this little section here that would be covered up. And I'm happy that that's going to just lift those butterflies up from the grey background. You can see, I'm not quite sure where I'm going to put the colour on this first butterfly. I soon um, decide that I'm going to put the pink in the centre of each of the wings and spread that outwards and then come back in on from the outside of the wing with the blue. See how that's really making those butterflies pop from the background and just adding a tiny touch of the blue to the outside of each of the wings. And again if you do get it wrong and you can't get it off with your finger then you can just bring in a baby wipe and wipe off the paint while it's still damp or the should I say the ink while it's still damp and then you can start again once that area is dry. And just a touch of blue on the outside of the wing. So I'm really happy with how pretty this is turning out and I'm going to take the grey pen next and just add some shadowing around the edge of the butterfly just again to, to lift it from that background or lift them from the background to make them look as if they're just sitting on that page. Now 
I plan to stitch these little layers of uh, paper together but I just need to hold them in position lightly before I do that so I'm just taking a little bit of glue and attaching the strips to the page avoiding that centre section where I can because that's where I'm going to add the stitching and I don't want to have to stitch to glue it gets a little bit um, tough I can't really avoid it much on that middle section but uh, at least I've only got one layer of glue and not uh, three layers so I'm just going around the outside edge of the little strip of paper or the little strips of paper and then looks like that one's already stuck itself down <laughs> and then I just need to add the little stack of papers into position and I thought at this point, do I want to stitch right through the page? Because I could stitch this little stack of papers together and I could really have done that on those other pieces. But I'm just going to go for it because I can always stick the next page over to hide the stitching on the underneath. So I'm using a little piece of foam. Um, putting that underneath my page and this is where I decide to go for it and uh, I am going to stitch through the whole lot and then I'm using a mat pin to um, add the holes that I'm going to stitch into and I've decided to use a chain stitch I think I can remember it from uh, my days do you remember making little samplers from uh, Iedium practicing lots of different embroidery stitches going round and round to till you reach the center and uh, chain stitch was always one of my favorite it always looks quite effective and reminded me of daisies and uh, I've decided to use that on this page I'm literally just doing it freehand I'm not measuring the gaps I'm just trying to get them as even as possible and as straight as possible along that gray strip so I'm just pushing into that piece of foam underneath And then again, on this little side panel. So again, I'm going to water down a little bit of gesso and uh, I'm going to add a little bit of splatter to my page. So I'm going to do a little bit of splatter in the white and a little bit in the black. Uh, and I'm also adding a little bit of splattering to my new pens. <laughs> I'm just tapping my brush against the uh, pen, could use anything really, just saves uh, bruising your finger. <laughs> and I'm adding some splatter all over my page. So cleaning up my pen and cleaning the surface and then moving on to the black. Because I don't want to contaminate the two colours and get a grey splatter, I'm going to dry in between the two different colours. So just carefully tipping out a little bit of uh, black distress paint or black soot distress paint. This is already quite runny so I don't need to add any water to this. And then I'm creating a really fine splatter with the black over my page. So now for the little focal butterflies on my page. These are going to be decoupaged onto my page and be the sort of little 3D element to add that last bit of interest to this journal page. And I have stamp sticks but I'm going to only use four and I'm just testing that I can move the colour around a little bit. Uh, I know this is going to end up more vibrant than I want but I'm going to use the same gesso trick just to knock them back a little bit. I want them to be a little bit more vibrant than the background page 
but not as pink as they are coming out here. So again, in the center of the butterfly with the pink and then around the outside edge with the blue. And I'm not too worried about going over the outside of the stamp because uh, I'm going to cut these butterflies out. So I'm happy with that and then I'm just going to rub a little bit of that gesso over the top and uh, I've created a slightly lighter butterfly. Ready to put onto my page. As I finish cutting this one out, just letting you see what that's going to look like on my page. And you can see it's going to stand out quite nicely, but it's not too, too vibrant. So putting myself onto really, really, really fast forward, I'm just going to colour the back of each of the butterflies in the pink. And that way, if uh, you can see underneath any of the butterfly wings, you're not going to see white card. And then I'm going to repeat that process for four butterflies in total. So I'm adding a chain stitch detail across the middle of each of the paper strips that I've created. So I've got a lovely pink embroidery thread starting out at the first hole right in the middle of um, my second page and going back through the same hole but holding onto the thread so I don't put it all the way through and that's in effect creating me a loop. So when I come back through the next available hole in my little row that I pierced earlier and I pull the thread, I end up with a little chain stitch. So just to tell you that again, I'm going back. Imagine that's the first hole that you come up through. You go back down the same hole, this time on the inside of your little loop or your little chain stitch and then creating that loop I'm getting myself in a bit of a tangle I've got my thread a little bit long here so creating that loop coming up through the next available stitch hole or pierced hole should I say and then again up through the middle of the loop to create your chain stitch and you're going to repeat that all the way to the end of your page so fast forwarding to my penultimate stitch and I'm just going to show you how to fasten off your thread. Now you need to be careful when you get to this outside edge because you could quite easily pull a hole into your paper and that final stitch that I'm going to come back up through. First of all I'm on the inside of that loop as normal to create this chain stitch and instead of going back into that same hole on the inside of that loop, I'm going on the outside. And that will just create a little tiny stitch at the end of your row that will secure that final chain stitch in place. So once you're happy with the tension, then you're just going to go through a few of those threads on the back of the page and tie off your thread. And just add a little bit of glue to make sure everything stays um, in position and your chain stitch won't unravel. And then for the little stack of paper, I'm working from the bottom to the top. I just wanted to add a little bit more texture to the edge of my page. So I'm taking that lace stamp and just randomly stamping along the edge of my layout. Again, it just frames everything and finishes it off. So I'm also adding um, some ink to the edges of those butterflies that I cut out earlier. So I've got a little piece of foam and I'm using that same archival ink and just making sure there are no white edges on my butterflies. It just helps them stand out uh, against that background because everything's sort of similar colours. You want uh, to make sure they don't get lost in the background, that they do look like they're 3D and raised from the page. And then I went away and I printed or typed out some words that I wanted to use, um, perhaps in other journals, but the phrase that I've got for this particular page is let your creativity take flight, 
see where it takes you because that's what this book's all about it's not a quote per se I just made it up so <laughs> unless you repeat it then it becomes a quote I suppose <laughs> and uh, I just thought it was uh, pertinent to the stamp that I've used that gorgeous butterfly and uh, also pertinent to the page I've kept it nice and small I don't want it to overtake the page I just want there to be a little message with this little tester of my gorgeous rubber dance stamp but it's brand new actually that lace background to me so it's the first time I've had ink on it and uh, I really like that gorgeous texture that I've created with it and um, it's quite feminine it's quite a feminine layout this one and uh, good good excuse to use pink uh, purely for me in this book because I've got boys I tend to use uh, um, boy colours more than I use girl colours actually you probably shouldn't differentiate between colours like that but you know pink is normally for girls <laughs> and uh, this is a pretty layout and I think you'll agree it is quite girly I'm just gluing my quote into position making sure that it stays put by adding a little layer of the matte multi-medium over the top and I'm just doing that quite simply with my finger making sure that's nice and dry Not making my butterflies fly away and then attaching the butterflies I've just lifted the wings slightly then just fluttering them across my page adding a little bit of shadow around my quote and by adding the multimedia it means it's just nice and slick and you can really blend that shadow out a little bit and just adding a little bit of pink to the quote because there's nothing really apart from the splatters very very white on the page so I'm just adding a touch of pink so they don't stand out quite as much and then I'm going to be using a couple of little sparkle trails to show you where my creative butterflies have been fluttering and as usual my camera memory card fills up right at the end of my layout so you don't quite catch the end of this layout but not to worry you'll see the results on the photograph the final bits of texture are some little tiny dots of distress glitter so I'm using my barbecue skewer to add some little dots to the wings of my butterflies and then sprinkling with some sponge sugar distress glitter and add a little bit around the edge of my quote as well So you can see the glitter there added to the wings of the butterfly and along the edge of the quote. So you can also see all that gorgeous texture that I've created, a little bit better detail of that lovely lace stamp that I used and um, how I've used my rubber dance stamp to give me that texture on my art journal page and to give me my focal point uh, in that gorgeous butterfly. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial and that I've given you some ideas for your art journaling and hopefully I've inspired you to follow the link at the end of this um, video to take you over to my blog and via there you'll find the links to Rubber Dance where you'll be able to see what's going on with all my other teammates and what they've created using this gorgeous colour scheme to inspire you to play along with us with the April Colour Challenge this month. Don't forget there are stamps to be won. So before I go and say the usual spiel, I just want to say a really, really big thank you for all the support that you've given me, either at my blog or here on my YouTube channel with my last video post, which was part of my audition for the Graphic 45 design team uh, 2015. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed for that and, and all your good wishes really did mean a lot to me. So until next time, don't forget if you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button, the share button, the subscribe button and uh, I look forward to sharing more creativity with you very soon. Thank you for watching.
this is the first link which will take you back to my blog and via my blog you'll be able to find the links to the Rubber Dance Colour Challenge and of course to check out all those gorgeous stamps. So if you want to check out that Graphic 45 audition this is the video link for the page that I created using their gorgeous Bohemian Bazaar papers. Alternatively you could visit my blog so there's a second link here which will take you back to the blog where you will see all of the things that I made and things that I've made previously for um, other uh, auditions that I've uh, taken part in for the Graphic 45 design team. But this was a brand new project and this is a little sneak peek of it. You'll see the full canvas over on my blog and this is one of another canvas that I created using one of uh, their paper collections, Secret Garden. So lots of fun over there and I really would appreciate your support. So if you pop along, follow those links. And as I was looking for photographs, I just happened to cross this one and this one and it made me feel very hungry and I thought I'd share it with you. <laughs> this is what you can eat if you go and visit everyone down there in Cornwall, clotted cream tea and a gorgeous hot chocolate by the beach. What could be, what could be nicer than that? I don't know about you, but I've made myself feel hungry. <laughs> Back to the links, back to the business of uh, creating and this link will take you to my rubber dance playlist where you will find a ton of inspiration for using rubber dance stamps to make cards or journals or all sorts of different things and uh, I'm, I'm sure that you'll find loads of inspiration if you click on this link. And then last but not least, this is the link to my Etsy shop where you'll find all sorts of online workshops for projects like this Pyramid Mini. It contains a little book in the bottom and opens up to reveal this wow and look at that stunning graphic 45 paper so i hope you click on this link and visit me over at my etsy shop see you next time